and sores. I'm sure they wouldn't tell you this story even if they could talk. Communication with a zombie is more difficult than you think. That's why we'll get another drink. I will get another drink. And I will get another drink. Because I can see past death if I'm drunk. Ooh. Ooh. Don't ever date skateboarders in the mission. It's just like if this is just a word. If anybody ever thought about dating a skateboarder in the mission, don't do it. It's, it's going to hurt you. They're, just, they're dead inside you. How much time do I got? Oh, shit! Wow! Well, we're going into weird, deep material then. Oh, crazy. Uh, so I used to... So, anybody... Disney? Anyone Disney fetishists around here? <laughs> well, I'm just saying Disney is his own fetishist. I think that he, you know, he had a fetish for death girl, dead girls. I mean, like, uh, if you look at Snow White, she was dead, and then the kiss princess her kisses her deadly lips, and then suddenly she's he's a zombie fetishist. Is what I'm saying. And then the Little Mermaid, like like that, I completely believe that she's like a dildo fetish. Like like little stuff is neat. Wouldn't you make my collections complete? How many dildos do you need? <laughs> Little mermaid, that's weird. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> you want the bigger bullets? I got 20. You need 20? I only need two. But come on. <laughs> Little mermaid. Anyway, I think a lot about Disney. And uh, so this is a poem about Disney. Uh, and how, you know, it, well, D Jesus and Disney really ruined me in my formative years. That's cool. I mean, maybe. I just, here, I gotta find it. Which page is that? This is about Bambi's mom. You know, if anybody loved Bambi. Here it is. Bambi's mom. Bambi's mother is dead, and there is no forest in heaven. She will not be romping with butterflies because her flesh was devoured by bears, and Jesus doesn't save fear. Disney introduced death because everything dies on page 80. It says so in the script. The director and God agreed. Let's make this shit realistic. Shoot the mom in the heart. Walt and God fought for the trophy, both wanting her head on their wall. Disney won by paying Heavenly Father two million tax-free, the soul of his brother's firstborn in a moxie. Bambi's mom's name was Bambi's mother. <laughs> Deer are too delicate to name, too fragile to last forever, even in memory. They startle at all sounds, leaping out of the metal, meadow so bears and guns can't find them. Bambi's mother had a one-night stand with the great prince of the forest. He never made a sound, never gave a nod to her in the darkness, but she sacrificed her whole existence to raise this bastard in a thicket. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if any of you love a little roommate, but Prince Eric, he's hot. <laughs> I wrote some poems about him, too. Uh, does anyone have a beard fetish? I see this guy back here. Mm, this goes out to you. There's a city in your beard. Rows of tiny houses filled by clever pundits whispering how to live. Confusing my fingers when I dig for skin, gardening invisible bonsai. I'll keep reaching till I find your jaw, longing to rent in your ghetto. Wow. wow. Beer goes. <laughs> I love beards. They're great things. Uh, let's go to... Oh, well, maybe I might punch it. Well, you know what? I got three minutes. Let me do my A material joke-wise. Um, so, my name's Pam Benjamin, and I'm a feminist. I'm just going to say a couple things about feminism, and then I'll talk about dicks in my mouth. <laughs> like the most feminist thing I can say. Here's the thing. People are like, you're a feminist. You're not supposed to say things like that. And I'm like, gay for free speech, because in Syria, I wouldn't have a tongue. I actually wouldn't have hands. I'd be dead. So I love to be able to say exactly whatever I want. I'm like, yeah, I'm a feminist. 
So uh, how many feminists does it take to screw in a light bulb? Oh no! <laughs> Hold on, let me take my dick out of this feminist mouth and we'll ask her. <laughs> I got a strap on too, it's cool. I can objectify them just as much as you can. What? <laughs> actually, uh, I've actually been objectifying a lot of 23-year-old skateboarders lately. And uh, it's really great. I like actually tell, I just walk up to them, I'm like, I'm going to objectify you. Will you take off your shirt? And they're like, yeah. There's not a joke there, it's just good for me. <laughs> uh, knock, knock. Who's there? Jesus. Jesus who? I know, did that guy exist or what? <laughs> like, is he totally like an allegory? Or are we all on the same page right now? I'm so confused. I was raised really religious, so it's confusing for me. Um, it's difficult because Jesus was my boyfriend for so long. Like, he was my just the best boyfriend ever. Like, he never tried to sleep with me, and like, he always, like, was there, and he was really awesome. I loved Jesus. So I'm single now. Um, <laughs> do you guys know that old adage, when life gives you lemons? You fuck 23-year-old skateboarders. That's how that goes, right? Like, I thought that's how that thing went. So, um, I've been, you know, I've been kissing and stuff, and guys keep trying to put their balls in my mouth, and I'm like, you know what, that's cool. Let's see what my issue is. I'm hungry. So if you could dip your nutsack in some marshmallow fluff, and then roll one ball in chocolate chips, and then roll the other ball in graham cracker crumbs. Because if, if I'm going to have your sweaty nutsack in my mouth, I kind of want it to taste like summer camp. <laughs> S'more dick, please! Less balls! S'more dick! Uh, so, I am actually, I, I, I'm looking for the right guy, you know? I, and I need him to be uncircumcised, because um, I want to pull his dick up, and then I want to pull his foreskin up, and I want to put whiskey in his foreskin. Because I want whiskey dick for real. <laughs> Yay! Finally! Leave a little bit schmegma, new and sexy ways to drink whiskey. So, okay, I'll leave you guys with this. It's football season. Anyone excited about that? You guys are poets. You're like, football, football season. Anybody give a shit about football? Okay, here's what I love about football season. I don't give a shit about football season. But what I like is to be with guys who give a shit about football season. Because then they get to watch football. Well, I'm having sex with them. <laughs> and I get to pretend that all the crowds are cheering for me! <laughs> this is the part where you cheer for me. Another of poets coming up. We have well, we just got another one on right now. We have um, we have Ed Mike Q, uh, Greg Pond, Clara Sue, Marco Hartz, Justice, Garrett Murphy, the Mini, Yasmin, Lion Pride already came in, and Patrick who just signed out. So we have a bunch of people coming up. Come on back, ten minutes. We shall be here same bat time, same bat station. And remember, you're streaming live. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. If you can't make it, this is the best way to join. So should you be not in the cheering part? Yeah, yeah. No, no, I will never do that. I will never do that. 
conversation. He's courageous and bold. Yes, I
because it then travels to a nearest negative point itself. Thus, the black hole radius around the negative point is, it teaches you to stay in the loop or to exit the loop, rather than stay in the loop and try to excel, getting away from the long term. There are, when the black hole radius around some negative point, no post horizon. Sometimes I think I understand that. And this is called Earth Fractures. A sagging telephone line, passing breezes amid cause of crows and occasions, seabirds escaping from ocean storms east to Nevada and Utah, and then back to California, settling in parking lots, deciding maybe east or west again, birds passing, pausing, hummingbirds silently flitting, and San Francisco marked with densely textured decades, written, written again, because the mind wasn't finished with them, unable to find a step-down program to get free from voices, visions up ahead there won't be telephone lines poles sunk yes, sediment under waters lathered by tides birds above and fish swimming below above yesterday's silt in fogs rain wind sun none to record a time arriving when earth itself fractures into space beyond deeming That's Mr. Natural. Do you mind if I take your picture while you're performing? Sure. Sure. Break your camera. Break soul. Yeah. Let's see. Well, I got another one here. Ah. This is a memento mori for an old friend when I was young and he was young. And it's called, this is called Raymond. Glide, hesitate, pause, stop. And bicker. White heart, tired all times. I hate that he died. Some people are brands when packaging blooms into lifestyles. Hester Prynne wore her scarlet letter for chastisement, not sale. Later, less fashionable than a brand is a middle-aged millstone. And they moved to Paradise, California, where Marianne's mom had a home. Ray married the 16-year-old buck girl when he was 19. 
He was born in 1938. He graduated in 1963 from Humboldt State, Arcata, California. Marianne graduated in 1970 from San Jose State, California. Christina LaRue Ray was born December 1957. Rachel Lindsay born 1958. Ray had one brother, James Carver, born 1943. Ray was born in Clatts County, Oregon, and grew up in Yakima, Washington. Ray died a long time ago, now, when he was about 50. And Mary Ann, who he divorced, he later married Tess, wrote a book in 2006 called What It Used to Be Like, a portrait of my marriage to Raymond Carver. And one in every four books is about someone. Memento Mori, old friend. Much for giving us your time and attention. Oh, yeah, let, me, let me just read the next few that are coming up. Uh, Greg Pond, Paris Hu, Mark Hartz, Justice, Garrett, the Mini, Yasmin, Lion, Pride, Hart, Patrick, and Darry, or Daryl. Daryl, right? Yes, Daryl. Daryl, thank you. Sorry about that. My eyes sometimes deceive me. Thank God. Anyway, give a nice round of applause to Mr. Greg Pond. <laughs> Alley Cat's Lament. We talked about ourselves, about reasons, about whys. We did not touch, we could not touch. We saw ourselves in a cycle without rhythm, but part of a black capacity. In the morning, the cats cry, a bittersweet child cry, if you're there to listen. In the early morning, the cats cry and mingle before you can turn to your lover, and you can hear them if you're not too tired to listen. The morning was tender for two black bodies immersed in a love cycle. We didn't, still couldn't quite feel the touch of interlocking fingers or gentle areas of concern, even though we displaced our chains. In the morning, the cats cry, a bittersweet child cry, if you care to listen. These, oh, these older two, and it's inspired by a Gwendolyn Brooks poem. It's called The Old Married. Down the hall, behind the last door, round the corner on the second floor, each night they dine in silence. These older two, who'd been through the boredom, bliss, and violence of textured days, happy patterns, and angry hues. Dogs, kids, and cats, and all the things that money can't buy matter most, they now realize, as they sit and eat in the silence of steamed vegetables and stewed meat, having swallowed their words long ago. So now it's just them left alone, left to remember the highs and lows, and the highs seem so fleeting, and the lows feel like a yoke around their shoulders. But they found a way in the crowding darkness of May by following sounds around the things they no longer chose to say. A whistling kettle, a hacking cough, a sizzling skillet, two cracked plates scraped with tarnished forks, an occasional chuckle or sigh as after the last cup of coffee and pie. These older two spend the rest of their days dining in nightly silence because there was nothing left to say. Celestial breakfast. A few drops of dew drip from the tip of a fat crescent moon 
spread back and forth across black pan orama a dash of seasoned planet soon dissolve into a new dawn yawning minutes in early june witness mother nature at her best making the world celestial breakfast a pinch of salty stars sprinkled across the waning dark then stirred by ladle spoon big dipper spatula flipper fills the plate of the very late night tripper Albumin clouds surround yellow yolk now broken, slowly scrambled and fried. Early cup of morning fog, steaming and stretching, then sleeping like a log but still feeling tired. Horizon burning like bacon curling in the earth's silver skillet, a griddle in the middle of sunrise, a splash of orange spilled on a napkin cloud, turned last night upside down over easy to the sunny side up next this breakfast served by the best chef money or heaven can buy i apologize usually i pay attention to the clock while somebody but i was listening to him so i didn't watch that happen all right so um 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 <coughs> claire sue will now be standing before you, or will be standing before you soon, to be followed by Mark O'Hara's Justice, 